Today we're taking a first look at the Marin Team Marin 2. This is a pretty nostalgic bike for me. I used to have a Team Marin back in the 90s when it was made out of chromoly. That thing was beautiful, super light, super fun. I took that to my first lift assist park <laughs> at North Star in Tahoe and I had a blast on that thing. All right, let's talk specs. The frame is a 6061 aluminum frame. It's boost through axle, love seeing that. It has a flat mount brake on the back, which is the gravel standard. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess XC bikes is probably okay, but I remember seeing that on the growler and kind of thinking that was weird to see that flat mount. It's got a Fox Stepcast 34 performance. This is a fantastic fork. It's 44 mil offset. This is what I run on my personal spot rocker. I love this fork. It's 34 mil stanchion. It's super light. They're fantastic forks at cross country. And they're good trail forks as well. And at this travel, I think it's gonna be perfect. It cannot be overstated how big of an upgrade this is over the Team Marin 1. It's also got an XT derailleur with full SLX 12 speed. It's got TRP G-Spec FMR disc brakes, 160 rotor in the rear, 180 in the front. We've got Maxxis Recon race tires. These are 2.35s. It has really thin seat stays like I love just like we saw on the Pine Mountain too. And I think this has the potential to be light, zippy, and quick without being overly harsh and just be a real modern cross country bike. We got 780 mil bars, 35 mil stem, 120 mil travel. We've got 175 mil cranks. There's FSA grid cranks. We have a Trans X dropper. This looks like a really great Northern California, Pennsylvania, New York, flowy single track bike. I know a lot of you love flowy single track. I do too on the right bike. And I think flowy single track is going to be way more fun on this bike than something like the San Quentin or something like my RSD middle child or something super rowdy like that. Having these light zippy bikes really make those blue and green trails come alive. And it looks like it's built for XC racing and training and long days on the bike. I think this could even be a great bike packing bike. I'm really excited for it. All right, let's talk geometry. So this is a size medium. It's got a 430 reach. 430 is about as short as I like to go for an XC or marathon or all day or bike packing bike. I think this will actually feel really comfortable, easy to ride. Uh, most of these shorter reach bikes are just pretty intuitive. Now when it gets steep and chunky, that's when I feel the short reach is difficult for me, both on climbs and on descents. But we shall see. These are all just assumptions based on what I've gone with on other short bikes. We have a 67 degree head angle and a 74 degree seat angle. However, it sits about an inch ahead of the bottom bracket. So it's actually steeper than that on the effective seat angle. So I think that might feel great as well. We have a nice short 425 mil chainstay. That should make it fun. We have a 58 mil bottom bracket drop. That means it should feel really planted in the corners. Those lower bottom brackets just are what a lot of people say they feel in the bike instead of on the bike when those bottom brackets are low. Seat tube's a little bit long, but I'm gonna see if I can get away with this 150 mil dropper. Hopefully, it's an XC bike though. What can you expect? On the medium, it's got 175 mil cranks. Those are longer than I like, but for an XC race bike, I might go that route. If you haven't seen my crank length experiment video, go watch that, it's very interesting. I learned a lot through that. I can put down good power with 175s, but for spinning all day, I like a little bit shorter crank personally, but now we're nitpicking and that's all personal preference. I'm really impressed with this thing. The only thing they could have done to make it even cooler, I think, is put an XT shifter on there. You would have got your double click, a little bit crisper shifting, but for having a Stepcast 34 fork, for having modern geometry that's on an XC bike, for having Maxxis Recon race tires and wide rims and short chainstay, and man, it, it looks great on paper. I'm super excited about this if you can't tell. For cable routing, everything is internal in the front part of the triangle then it all exits out the, in front of the bottom bracket and it's all external on the back half. Not crazy about that, you know me, but almost every XC bike these days is internal like that. 
While there are little things I would change for personal preference, there's nothing on here that's a deal breaker at all. But that makes me happy because so many bikes out there are close with one Achilles heel and this does not have any visible Achilles heels. Final weight came in at 27.86 pounds. I think that's respectable for a intermediate price bike for its intended purpose. That Fox 34 Stepcast is helping keep the weight low. You know, these FSA cranks, the TransX dropper, the bar and stem, there are ways to lower the weight, but I think 27, I know that sounds like a lot for people who are used to bikes from the 90s where we had small wheels and no droppers and short everything and they broke all the time, but bikes have gotten bigger, bikes have gotten longer, more aggressive, they've got more travel, they've got bigger wheels, they need to be made a little bit stronger because people are going to be taking them off jumps and drops, so bikes in general have gotten heavier. This is nowhere near the sub 25 pounds of my spot rocker, but it's also half the price and that's significant. I'm excited about that weight. Usually under 28 pounds helps a bike feel energetic and fast and accelerate well. We'll see when it gets out on the trail. I haven't been excited about XC bikes for a while, but as they start to get slacker and slacker, they become more and more fun to ride. I'll be interested to see how this handles compared to my spot rocker, compared to the Marin Pine Mountain 2, compared to a couple other bikes out there but I'm really liking what I'm seeing. This has the potential to be really good at what hardtails are good at, which is flowy, sprinty, single track. I don't wanna to make too many more assumptions without riding it. It could be super stiff, it could feel super awkward, or I could really connect with it and I could just fall in love with this thing as a fun little trail bike. For the price, I think this would be a fantastic bike for someone racing Nika in high school who wants a competitive bike without spending over $2,500. And a great rider could win a lot of races on this. I think Marin has knocked it out of the park. I think the price point is right where it should be. And I think, at least on paper, it has what it takes to be a great XC race bike and trail bike and long distance bike, maybe even bike packing bike for the price. But it all depends on the ride review. Some bikes ride exactly like you'd think they would with their geometry. Other bikes ride totally different. It's all about that ride because a great riding bike with bad components is so much more fun than a poor riding bike with great components. If you need help navigating the confusing world of bike geometry and bike specs and comparing bike A to bike B, I offer a consultation service on Patreon where I work one-on-one -on -one with my clients to help them know which bike I recommend for them in their situation. I'm excited about this bike. What about you? What's your favorite part? What would you change? Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.